Welcome back to Income Trading 101. Today is Friday, May the 7th, and I wanted to take a look at uh, SIA coin. Um, just taking, gonna pull this data out just to see how much data we have. Looks like this one goes all the way back to 20, 2018, uh, late 2018. And you can see, while not flat, you know, the, the, the pricing initially for this coin for, you know, nearly, uh, well, for two and a half years, um, I'd say two years, stayed sub a nickel, right? Uh, and then, well, I mean, it still is a good, I mean, to go from fractions of a penny up to five cents was still huge. It's just that this first, you know, year and a half, two years of this graph look significantly less impressive to what's happened to everything in 2021, uh, everything in the uh, crypto world. So um, let's go ahead and get rid of this volume and just take a look at this. I'm looking at SIA coin versus the US dollar and I can already see a nice upward move. I'll tell you towards the end of the video, a few things that I like about this right now. But uh, if you haven't already, please do go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I follow the same process every time. We're gonna start off looking at moving averages. We're going to next get into using the MACD, which I love as a, uh, you know, as a momentum indicator. And then finally, I'll look at things like Fibonacci retracements, um, any sort of support resistance, any trend lines, channels that I see. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you get to see the rest of these videos as I make them. All right, so let's dive in. Like I said, we start off every time with moving averages. So I'm going to do use three of them. Uh, I like to use the 10 day, the 20 and the 60. And you guys may use different ones. If you do, I'd love to hear what you use. Leave a comment. Um, these are the same settings that I've always used when I was looking at equity markets uh, because equities actually, you know, only trade it Monday through Friday. Obviously, crypto uh, doesn't sleep. So um, arguably, I should use different settings, but it still gets me kind of an idea of what I'm interested in learning. So as you can see during an uptrend, the green line, the short term, that's the 10 day is going to be higher than the medium term, the 20, and both should be higher than the 60. Uh, what we have right now after this pullback, though, we have a situation where even though these are in line, uh, meaning they're in line for a bullish signal, uh, meaning that the 10 is higher than the 20, which is higher than the than the 60. Um, they're really close together. So if you can look in the upper left hand corner at the actual numerical values, you can see that right now the 10 and the 20 are like, you know, basis point away from less than a basis point away from each other. You have uh, the 10 at 0, 0 0.040 and the 20 at 0 0.039. Um, so, uh, in fact, if you round, yeah, if you were to round it, yeah, it's basically a, a basis point. So, um, that being said, that's really close. I would probably wait for another day of confirmation, another day of up moves, if I was only using the 10. I'm sorry, only using daily, but... As you guys know, I also like to look at these across different time frames for verification. So at the one hour level, you had a nice crossover here that happened earlier today. And now the 10 is higher than the 20 and higher than the 60 period. Although these last few bars have certainly pushed uh, lower. I imagine the 30 is going to be a little closer to a downward move. Um, so yep, at the 30 minute, uh, you have the 20 is actually slightly higher than the 10 and both are higher than the 60. So I call this a period of convergence uh, because these uh, three trend lines are out, the three moving averages rather, are out of order. So that's not a clear indication of a trend. And then the 15 minute, you also have a, a similar, it's just more profound with the 20, with the 10 period being between the 20 and the 60. So I only, if I'm using moving averages only as my trading indicator, I wait for all three, all three uh, moving averages to be in line with one another in order. And I also like to see that order um, validated at uh, lower time frames because I'm going to trade, I'm going to enter the trade 
using a lower time frame. So let's go ahead and take this back to daily, uh, the daily data. Uh, largely, I said the moving averages are somewhat in, uh, in not only inconsistent, but inconclusive. Uh, let's see if the MACD gives us a better indication of where this, where price action might be taking us. So at the daily, it's no surprise, given that we've had a long term, a longer upward trend, you know, of the last few months, um, we haven't seen uh, the MACD or the signal line go into negative territory in quite some time. So I find this to be less valuable. But let's look at the one hour. So at the one hour level, we have had some oscillations up and down. Most recent one was a cross that happened earlier today, early this morning, and it crossed in the negative, which is a great indication of a buying signal, especially once it crosses, uh, once both the MACD and the signal line, which is in red, cross, um, cross the zero line to go positive. That, that to me is a great buying indication um, if, you, if you can catch that. Let's see, at the 30 minute level, 30 minute, um, you've already had a crossover in the positive territory, which is indicative of a downward uh, price movement, which we've seen in price. I would not look to sell this until both uh, the MACD and the signal line cross into negative regions. And as soon as they do, it'd be a good time, good time to short. The reason why I'm so hesitant, though, though, is that you can get these crosses and they don't end up materializing into um, a, a true uh, change in momentum. They just show momentary uh, kind of price fluctuation. And let's take it to the 15. So the 15 is actually, this is actually a really strong signal for a sell at the short term level because you have this cross that happened positive territory but both the MACD and the signal line have crossed into negative territory which I would argue is a is a downward move um, but this is the perfect time since we've gone through both moving averages and the uh, MACD to talk about momentum uh, well really strength so right now this clearly has a lot of strength and you know definition of a upward trend is higher highs and higher lows and so I look at this price channel right here now sure we went above it we went way above it we popped right but I, we I look at that price trend there and you can tell there have been largely higher highs and higher lows um, it didn't take much for me to draw a trend line uh, and a channel really a price channel that included most of the points, most of the closes, most of the trading data is tied within that upward moving band. And until we break that to the downside, I would expect price to continue to move higher. Um, where might it go? I would expect it to retest this high of 60 cents ultimately, um, even though uh, we're quite a ways away from that right now, given that we're only 18 cents. Um, I also want to expand this and go ahead and do a quick little retracement on that last move um, that move uh, down off the high just to get a sense of how much we actually uh, dropped and ha and have retraced so if I look at it from that standpoint looks like current price is just about at the 50% retracement level even though we've crossed it each of the last, well, we've crossed it several times today, or actually the last few days. Um, we'll see if it closes above, but you know, we had a nice 50% retracement off the, off the low of that pullback. So that too is strong. I would imagine that if we push on up to the 61.8, which you can see is 4.68 cents, um, there's a good chance that we'll go ahead and hit this, fit, this uh, five and a quarter cent 5.25 cent range um, for the previous top, but also the 78.6% retracement of that previous move. So all in, I like I like the long side of this trade. Um, if you own it, I would. I'm I'm I actually just bought some too. I think this has some. Uh, it's got some legitimate uh legs on it uh from a technical analysis standpoint 
Can this thing go lower? Absolutely. I would put a lower limit at like 30 cents, somewhere around there. Um, I'm sorry, that's not 30 cents, that's three cents, um, which is 25% lower than where we are. Um, you can certainly make your, make your stop a lot closer than that. Um, but I really want to give this enough room to prove itself either way. So um, that's it. Let me know if you guys trade see a coin. Like I said, I just I bought some earlier. Uh, as I was looking at it, I just I I believe at the very least that we might see a retracement up to six cents, which would be a fifty percent, almost a fifty percent increase from where it is now. Um, and I also like the fact that even though it's off of its high, it still very much is in line with a upward trending channel. And uh, yeah, I could see that with my eyes just bef even before I started to do the analysis that I just like the way, uh, I like the way this thing moves. I like the way, anyway, um, I don't wanna break any copyright uh, <laughs> issues there too. So that's it for Sea of Coin. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, thank you guys so much. Please do subscribe and thank you for those of you who have and thanks for watching these videos. I love doing the analysis and I love uh, seeing the comments and knowing that you guys appreciate it. So have a great day, have a great weekend and happy trading.